Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. So I would like you to meet one of our little bearded dragons here that we have available at our point of sale. He is a hype, he or she is a hypo red bearded dragon and we've been available for about two weeks after we've come out of quarantine and I have some plants in front of me today. So what I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about is what plants work great for the Terra Sahara bioactive substrate. We have customers asking all the time, BioDude, I just got a bearded dragon, what type of plants can I put in there? So the biggest thing I wanna to touch base with first is when you have a herbivore or an omnivore desert reptile, such as a bearded dragon, a lot of the edibles that you put in there you put them in there with the intent to get destroyed. You put them in there with the intent to provide them enrichment so they can forage as nature intended and graze and eat. So there are a lot of different types of desert plants out there that you can go with. But the first thing that I want to talk about that isn't on this table that you can get at your local grocery store are things like mint, hibiscus, rosemary, basil. All of those things, mint, you can plant directly in your Terra Sahara. Not only will it grow, it will make your tank smell better, and it'll provide a snack for your, for your little one whenever we're ready to eat. So those are some really good options, but there's other, also other great options that we have available at thebiodude.com. So the, one of the most common ones that you'll see us offer is the uh, Apontia cactus. Now, our cactuses are spineless. Now, what that means is they don't have big plugs or big spikes on them. Once in a while, they may have a very, very tiny bristle attached to a pad. That can be an inconvenience if you get it on your finger. But it doesn't harm your animals. So what I recommend with the cactuses is I, as your cactuses grow, I like to break off a little piece of a pad. I'll cut it up, and I'll put it in their veggies because a pontia is naturally very, very high in calcium. It's also a great resource for tortoises as well, which I don't know about you, but I love watching tortoises go ham over some cactus. Like, I, it's so much fun, especially redfoots. Oh, they go nuts. Another really common one that we sell here at the BioDude is the elephant feed. This is just, a, it's also a mini jade, but that's just a common nomenclature that this plant has been called. So this is literally a mini tree, a mini tree. Now this, now they do eat this. It's sour, it tastes like grapes. 100% edible, safe to eat. And a lot of times you'll plant this in your enclosure and they'll have it picked clean in two weeks. It'll literally just be a, a, a fragment of a tree, which again, that's what it's all about. Then we have another really popular edible plant. This is a called, a, this is an agave. So not only is this plant also edible, it can be separated to grow in multiple directions and it's more of a grass. So it does get pretty dense. The tops can get mildly spiky. Okay, it's like, oh, it's big. it doesn't break any skin or anything, but that's something to be, to watch for. Um, but this grows great in your Terra Sahara setups, guys, or whatever DIY, you know, desert bioactive substrate that you're trying to use. Um, and then we also have other types of uh, succulents and aloes and uh, Haworthias here. So on my website, I try to have as much of a variety as possible. But for herbivores and omnivores that are desert, I push edibles, guys. You know, I'd much rather see you go, be honest with you, I'd rather see you go to the store, buy rosemary, buy basil, buy oregano, whatever you want. Get it in there, get it established, get it watered, and just keep refilling. But if you want aesthetics to really make it pop for like a leopard gecko, we got the, we got the plants. So we have two different versions of aloe veras here. This is called a hedgehog aloe. Uh, or sorry, an octopus aloe, pardon me, um, and then a normal aloe vera. So aloe vera, uh, just like any other plant, you can break it and you can use it on any type of burn or anything like that. Completely edible. The spikes on here, what spikes? I'm not going to keep stroking this, okay? I just, I want you guys to see the spikes are not sharp, okay? Completely harmless to your animal. You can also use things like talansias 
Remember how I said in the other videos how Talansias just need really good airflow? You can keep the Talansias, you can put them on rocks, you can put them on your ghost wood, you can put them wherever. As long as you give them a light mist every couple days, they'll do great. There you go, little dude. You can go on top of your snowflake rock here. Yeah. So then we have other types of Haworthias here. So we have uh, these Haworthias right here, all different types. Okay? Okay? So we offer a lot more different types than just this on the website. We also offer like Haworthia 3 packs or succulent 3 packs or aloe 3 packs or Terra Sahara desert kits, all that good stuff. So that way you can take a look at what works best for you. Then we have a lot of other types of aloes. Now succulents, I love succulents because succulents are beautiful. They are colorful, they're easy to grow, and they thrive on neglect. But they also break very, very easily. So if you have a destructive animal, that is not a leopard gecko, a Central, Aman a Central American banded gecko. If you have an animal like a bearded dragon, yeah. you're a mastix. They're going to destroy these less than a day after putting them in. So if you want to try it, go for it. Succulents can bring that pop of color right out to your tank, but don't expect them to last long. Well, you want to look for the beautiful, sturdy plants, like these aloes right here. So look at that. There ain't no break in this. We're just going to take pieces of these off. And then there's also the hedgehog gallery right here, which you can break in the chunks and grow. So I actually just noticed this. I want to show you guys. Let's go over to the, the tank for sale. Remember how I told you what, what happens to the elephant feed? They literally picked it clean to the point when there's new growth coming in here here all throughout but the moment they grow i guarantee you that this crumb bum right here this crumb bum is going to go and eat all of it so we also have a cryptanthus earth star in here that's doing really really well um, earth stars are another great desert option for you as well as like maintaining your enclosure so Really quick, let's go over here. Let me show you just one of my uh, Sahara setups. This is from my oscillated skinks. These guys are from Greece. And this enclosure is doing wonderful. We have an adult hedgehog aloe in here. We have a spaghetti agave right here. We have two Apontia danicolor cactuses right here. And, of course, you can see a young oscillated skink basking right there on his little branch. So we, though, these guys don't really eat any veggies, but we do notice that some of the excess crickets and roaches that might get out love to uh, nibble on the cactuses or other things like that. But overall, we've been having a lot of really good success with all the plants in this enclosure. And I absolutely love how this has been, you know, maintained and how it's growing. It just looks absolutely beautiful. Um, and then we have really destructive critters. So I have been trying really hard to find actual trees for desert plants. It's hard because most of them have thorns or they're just big things of grass, which I'd rather just sell you the seeds and you can grow the grass yourself. It'd be a lot cheaper. So then we also have the the Aki enclosure over here. So we got these two, you got, we got these two in here, love and life. But as you can see, there are no plants in here at all. As much as I would love to have plants in here, I just do not find it to be feasible because they will just tear it to pieces. And that is something when it comes to desert setups that you must accept. Your desert bioactive terrarium is not for you. It is for him. And when you set it up, you want to make sure that the plants aren't just for you to look at. They are there to be naturally grazed at, to be eaten, and to be destroyed. Because in the wild, that is what these animals do because they rely on what's in their environment to survive. Because let's face it, living in the desert has to suck. So surviving is a challenge. And that's where BioDude comes in. So like I said before, on our kits, on our website, we have plant kits. If you click on the aloe, it'll tell you what it is, what animals it works for, what substrates it works for, how big it gets, humidity ranges. Don't neglect it for too long type of thing. 
Again, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this brief overview of what goes into uh, what type of plants work for the Terra Sahara. My name is Josh Halter. I'm the owner and founder of the BioDude. Please like, subscribe, follow, visit my store Saturday uh, 10 to 2, Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. The dude abides.